Okay, so now it's time to get it quilted. And I'm gonna quilt this using my sewing machine. And um, if you'll notice here, I've got our little project laid out. This is our quilt top. And then I have a layer of batting laying out right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, and I'm just gonna generously cut probably about two inches around each edge on all four sides. That way I have batting extending out all four sides. And once I get through quilting it, I'll be able to square it up and it'll be nice and neat. And then another thing that I'm gonna do is, once I get the batting cut, then I'm gonna take my backing. So I went in and I just kind of grabbed something out of my stash, out of my stash that just said, ooh, that makes me happy. And this is going to be my backing. Once I trail my batting to the measurement that I want, then I'm gonna go ahead and lay my backing underneath it. And I want that backing to extend pretty wide too. Now I haven't counted yet how many Jelly Roll pieces that I've used, but I'll count those, I'll look, and then I'll tell y'all in a few minutes. This backing is 45 inches wide. I bought it off the bolt. And when I open it up, because I already did a little test to kind of see if it would be wide enough. So for the amount of Jelly Roll pieces that I've used here, this is gonna be plenty wide for my backing. But I'll look at that again in a little bit and let you know how many I incorporated into our project. So another thing that I want to do is I want to install my walking foot onto my machine. And that way I'm going to get much more consistency using a walking foot when I'm quilting. Mine is a belt driven foot, so it plugs it in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and install that into my, onto my machine. And just kind of talk to you a little bit while I'm doing that. I'm gonna store my little sewing foot right up. Yeah, so whatever machine you have, check and see if you have an option for your walking foot. And that way, since we're gonna be quilting through three layers of fabric, it's gonna give you more consistency and control when you're doing your quilting. Okay, so I have my walking foot on. Now let me go ahead and show you a little more up close. I'll count those strips and I'll let you know how many I've incorporated into our project. Now remember, if you want yours bigger than mine, you can use more strips, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind. This is kind of a small scale, kind of quick little thing that I'm doing to create a smaller type sample. It's gonna be a great size if I wanted to use it on the sofa or something like that, just to kind of cover up uh, when I'm sitting and watching TV, or maybe if I'm traveling, this is also gonna be a good size for me to use, or anyone that's in the car that might get cold, it's also gonna be a good size. Okay, so let me go ahead and give you a closer look to what we're gonna do next. I've counted our strips, and we have 17 Jelly Roll strips incorporated into this project that we're working on, just to let you know that. Now, I have my fabric laid out on top of the batting, so you, I'm gonna just start over here I'm gonna just use a pair of scissors. You could definitely use your rotary cutter. I'm kind of in a little temporary setup of my sewing room because I'm at my daughter's house right now. So I'm just gonna use my, uh, sewing, my sewing scissors. So the table that I'm usually working on is a bit bigger than what I have here, but don't you just love it how we can always make whatever we need work for our little sewing studio. So, so once again, I've got at least two inches extending off to the left and I've used some fabric I've used, excuse me, I've used this batting before for another project. So I'm gonna go ahead and just trim the rest of this batting just right to there. It's, again, it's just very approximate. I just wanna know that I'll have a bit extra extending on all four sides. So there we go, I've got this trimmed off and I'll go ahead and just rotate it around. Let's see, because I got a lot over here on the right side. I'm gonna be a little messy here with you, but you're here sewing with me, so we're just gonna have it, um, we're just gonna get nice and exact. Now, if you have a space, it, you might even wanna get down on the floor possibly to do this, but I'm good with where I'm doing it here. Okay, so got this kind of nice and flat, kind of smoothed out, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start trimming up this size, side over here. Right, so I've got that started and I'll just kind of wiggle it down, I'll just kind of pull it down as I go. And I'm gonna kind of pet the fabric too, just to kind of make sure I've got 
it nice and smooth. I have plenty of batting, so there's no way I'm gonna cut it too short. But I am a fabric petter. I just love fabric, and I know that y'all do too. And I do tend to just smooth and touch my fabric a lot. Okay, so I've got a lot of extra bulk up here. I'm gonna kind of swing that up. I throw that back there. There we go. All right, so I'm pretty generous here. I think that's probably closer to three inches, but I know that's gonna be plenty. So now I'm just gonna rotate it around and cut up this side. And hopefully you are able to see what I'm doing here. The love of being able to kind of get those, those video angles there to where you can see what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. And if you have ever taken a class from me before, you know that I definitely love to teach and share my knowledge with others. But I also like to kind of fly by the seat of my pants when it comes to creativity. The creative process to me is one of my most favorite processes. I always say that it's creative therapy. So I really enjoy starting a project. Okay, I'm just gonna throw that on the floor. Let me turn this around. I really enjoy just the fun of freely starting a project. So a lot of times when you see some of my tutorials, they're just gonna give you inspiration and definitely mix with some education. But hopefully, I will present it in a way to you to where even the beginner or the advanced person might learn something. Um, being able to be creative with our fabric, our machines, all the thread that we love to use, to me it's a journey that is definitely creative therapy. So sometimes I feel like I've come across new friends that have taken a class from me and they think they cannot do what we do, right? Grab fabric, play with it, create something, maybe do some garment sewing, maybe do some quilting like we all love to do. But they've been discouraged along the way by someone that makes them be perfect. Now, I have my traditional foundation, but I think when you begin a journey, when you begin a new craft that you're working on, you're never gonna be perfect from the beginning. So I always like to encourage my students to know that as you continue to learn and you do things over and over again, you're gonna get better and better. So never not begin a journey that's gonna give you so much fun and creative therapy just because you don't think you get it uh, right the first time. Because as we do things more and more, we'll get better and better. Okay, oh, I tend to go on my side tangents. I love to talk. All right, so if you'll notice again, We've got batting extended on all four sides. Now I'm gonna grab my backing fabric. So here's my backing fabric. And I've already just kind of roughly cut it. I'm gonna use the width of the fabric. And so whenever you purchase a fabric, on each end you have selvages. So selvage to selvage, that's gonna be right about a 44 inches wide says 45, but usually it's not that large, okay? But look at that. See, I know that I now generously have plenty of that backing fabric, okay? So let me go ahead and pick this up, just doing a test there, and I'm going to just fold this over and over, and then we're gonna lay our backing out. With a little string there, so I'm going to take that off. Get it nice and kind of tamed here as we lay it out. And again, if you want to do this on your floor, you could definitely do this on your floor. All right, so here's our quilt top. Let me open that back up. I think my strips are running this way, so I'm going to turn it. All 
It'll take us just a little bit to kind of tame it. We are the master of the fabric. Open it back up. Now, if you're using a fabric like, like I am that has a print, and this print here has a direction, it has some really distinct straight lines. So I really do want to try to keep this straight when I lay my batting and my and my uh, quilt top on, on top of it. If you have a fabric that's solid, it's gonna be a little a little less kind of cumbersome for you because the direction is not is going to be a little bit more forgiving. All right, so I'm just going to kind of eye it and stretch it out there. I have a little extra fabric up here at the top, so I'm going to just grab my batting and my top and pick it up and kind of lay it back down. Just play with it a little bit. All right, kind of getting it to where I think it'll be good to go. And so I'm just going to kind of, I'm just going to give a, a gentle tug on my batting and I'll tug my backing. I want to make sure that I don't have any ripples in it. I want it to be flat from the top and on the bottom. I'm just going to slide this down now that I've kind of got it behaving itself. There's so many different methods of basting. We can use safety pins. We could actually use a needle and a thread and do like the X axis and then the plus sign. And that can keep that um, controlled for you. But now that I've got this kind of where I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some quilting straight pins I'm going to take my quilting straight pins and I'm going to just put a few right down the center. One thing that um, I've learned from traveling and teaching also is that you actually enjoy just being taught a beginning process to where you can start a new thing and then you can do it more and more and you can get better and better at it. All right, so I've got a couple of pins in here. I'm just gonna kind of roll this over, slide this up. Still just petting my fabric. I'm gonna put another pin in place right down the center. And the reason why I'm doing it in the center is I'm going to start quilting down the center of our little quilt here. This would be a good uh, baby quilt too. If you would create this in primary colors for a baby or whatever color possibly that the mom's doing the nursery maybe. I'm just going to slip a couple more pins in here. I think I'll have that controlled. There we go. All right. Now that I have that all together, I'm going to open it back up. And I'm probably just going to, I'm going to just slip over the edge here a couple of times. And then I'll just rotate it around. I really didn't have to rotate it around, but I'm just kind of doing it so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I could have just did the exact same thing on the opposite side. And now I'm going to go ahead and just take this and flip that over a couple of times. Because we're going we're gonna to tame the center of it first 
and then we'll work our way towards one side and work our way to the opposite side. All right, so let's go ahead and take it over to the sewing machine and let's, let's start getting it quilted. One more little side note before I bring it over to the machine. So we have all of our rows, our textured piecing, and they go in different directions. Now, if you've seamed all of yours together to where all of the seams might go into one direction, then you'll want to start on your sewing machine going towards the seams to where they will naturally lay flat. Now, I, I do have quite a few down here that are going to naturally lay in that direction. Another thing you might notice that um, my machine is actually a sewing and an embroidery machine, but I can leave my embroidery unit on while I'm doing my quilting. So you will notice that I'm going to leave my embroidery on. Sometimes I get quite little little questions here and there about certain things and that's probably a question that I'm going to get. So I'm leaving my embroidery arm on but I'm also already set up for sewing on my sewing machine. Guys one thing I wanted to mention to you because I am doing my quilting on my sewing machine embroidery machine combination and I'm leaving that embroidery arm on. What I like to do is make sure this is the lever that locks in your embroidery frame always make sure that I have this closed down. That way when we're running our fabric through to do the quilting, it won't be riding up on top of that little tower and it might slow you down a little bit. So just kind of a tip, I always like to just keep this closed when I'm doing any kind of quilting and I keep my embroidery unit attached. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go into my sewing side of my machine. I'm gonna use a center straight stitch. So go ahead and I like to use a center straight stitch. You pick whichever one you might want. And then I'm gonna go ahead and increase my stitch length. I want my stitch length to be about a 3.0. When I do quilting on the sewing side of my machine, that's just something that I find works for me. Um, I also am going to use my pivot feature. So when I stop, my presser foot will come up and my needle will stay down. That's gonna help me. You'll see as we get started. Okay, so now I've got my my fabric sound sandwich right here. I've already kind of pulled it up underneath a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to pull it in the rest of the way. Here is the center where I marked with my straight pins. I'm gonna bring it all the way back to where the batting is in the backing. And so when I get started, I like to start on the fabric just a little bit or, or not necessarily on the fabric but in the batting section here so I'll go ahead and just look right there about where my straight pin is I'll go ahead and just lower my presser foot I'm already set up for that straight stitch and I've lengthened that stitch link and so now I'm just going to use my hands to just kind of guide the fabric as I go Now, before I get to that straight pin, I'm gonna pull that straight pin out. How many have y'all stitched over straight pins and broke a needle? So it's always a best practice to remove those straight pins. Okay, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go in the direction towards our first seam. And so I'm making sure when I come up underneath the presser foot, and notice that since I have that pivot feature set, um, when I stop, the needle's going to stay down and the foot's going to come up. So I can go ahead and just kind of guide that seam flat. And we'll do the same thing as we, as we come towards every seam. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to just be mindful that we keep those seams flat to where all of our pretty textured thread is facing up. We don't want to flip it over to where that back thread is showing and that's not what we wanted, right? So we are that master of the fabric. We're gonna make that seam go in the direction that we want it to go into. And you just stop every once in a while and just pet your fabric left and right. Got another straight pin we need to remove. So if you have piece yours to where they're all in one direction, just make sure you're coming in the direction where the seams will naturally lay flat. It'll just make it easier for you. Okay. 
And the reason why I like to pet is just so if there's any ripples or anything going on underneath, I know that I can feel, and then I could give it a little tug from the left to the right if I feel like I need to. So earlier I was talking about I had more seams coming in this direction. So to make it easier on myself, I made sure I started to where I knew that all of these would work with the flow of the presser foot naturally. Okay, so now we've taken our first row of quilting. I didn't mention to you earlier, but I'll go ahead and mention to you now. What I did is I just chose a, a thread that really just kind of complemented everything. And so I felt like that off-white thread was more of uh, a color that would really just kind of work in every print. So I just chose to do an off-white, uh, just regular quilting or sewing, a regular sewing thread in the needle and in the bobbin case. I'm just going to slide it towards me. Now, if you wanted to be really accurate in your spacing for your quilting, which I'm not going to be, I'm just going to guesstimate it, you could. Now, I don't find that it's necessary for you to have really close, close quilting rows, so I'm just going to scoot over. I'm going to pop over maybe about four inches or so, and again, I'm just guessing, so don't get too too um, concerned about exactly how far apart your quilting rows are. And another thing that I like to do with this method of quilting that I do, sometimes I'll even just kind of curvy, do some curvy quilting. But for this one, we're gonna just kind of eye it and keep it as straight as I can, all right? So now I'll just continue forward. Now this, at this point, we know we have a seam over here, so we're not necessarily gonna have to worry too much about this side of the quilt, but we still wanna just pet the fabric here to the right and make sure we don't have any buckling in between there. Okay, it's as easy as that. We still have some texture poking up. Now, what I'll do, I'll kind of start with it this far apart. As I finish, and if I decide I wanna come back and do another row in between, then I can do that. But since I've already kind of given it a taming, I've already tamed it a good bit, it'll just be easier for me to come back in between these if I feel like I need more quilting once I finish. So I'm gonna go ahead and get finished with this row of the quilt. I'll just let you watch me. Grab your favorite beverage. I'm a tea drinker. I love chai tea. That is kind of my favorite muse. I'm not a coffee drinker, but tea works well for me. So I'm gonna grab my cup of tea to where I can sip every once in a while and just enjoy watching this come to life. Okay, so guys, I'm gonna share with y'all a little side note. So if you possibly do have the machine that I have, or you have a machine that has the capability that my machine has, I'm gonna show you a trick. It's a, it's a really good feature that's built into this machine that if you have it, you wanna use it. So if we look on the top of the screen, there's an icon right here at the top. This is your guide beam icon. It looks like a little oil can kind of turned upside down, but this is your guide beam icon. We're gonna to touch it. 
I'm going to show you how to set it on the screen first and then I'll bring my camera over and then I'll do it again and let you see what's happening underneath my needle. So we're going to touch the guide beam icon. You notice that I have an area that pops up here to ask me, it asks me some questions. And so the first thing I'm going to do is pop over here and touch the icon that says on. And when you first start, you're probably going to be in your main tab, but I was playing a little bit. But we want to go over to the sub icon. And I was also playing here too. You have some different things, but some different features that you can choose. But what I want you to choose would be your grid. You see how it has a little grid right there? Right, so I've zoomed up a little bit so you can see that icon much better. See the grid? So we touched our guide beam first, we turned it on, we went to the sub tab, and we touched the grid. Now, I already tested it, so I found that on my fabric, I want the grid to be white. So I'm going to touch the little square that's white. So you can change your grid to a green, to a white, and to a red. And you'll want to change that to whatever color is going to... Um, give you a better visual on the fabric that you're using. Now the next thing I want to do is change the grid size. So this is where the grid is all the way to the smallest. But for what I'm doing, I want it to be the very largest that I can get. So I'm just going to hold my finger. You're seeing those numbers move. And I'm going to hold it to where it stops. It, you know, I'm let it continue into where it won't change anymore. And so if you're a person that likes to be very straight and very perfect, this is a great feature for you to use if you have this machine or you have a machine that has this feature. So there we have it at 30, point, uh, 30 millimeters, all right? So now that looks pretty good. I'm just going to close the window here. I don't have to, but I'm going to, all right? Now I'm going to take you over to the uh, workspace and I'm going to do all of that all over again and you'll just be seeing what's happening on my fabric. Okay, so now you can see on my fabric again, I'm going to go to my machine. I'm going to turn on my guide beam feature, just like I showed you earlier. I'm going to touch the on icon on my screen. So now you're seeing that grid appear. And when you first turn your machine on, you may not have your grid selected. So I just kind of touched one of the other features. Now I'm going to touch the grid and you see that grid pop on. Now that green is pretty good, but I'm going to, I'm going to change it to the white because I think you'll see it better with my camera screen. There we go. See, I'm going to zoom you up. I may be wrong just because of the camera feature. Let's go back to green. Okay, you can see the green, right? Let's see the red. I like the green best, I think, for the camera. Now, sometimes when I'm videoing and I'm using this feature because it's actually projecting down on the fabric, there's lots of different colors in the light that projects. So what you see physically on your machine with your naked eye, it may be different than what you're seeing with my camera, but it's here. Okay, now remember, here we have our last little sewing, okay? This was our last quilting line. Before I show you how I wanna line this up, we're gonna change the size of the grid because I think it'll help us better and we won't have to, uh, we won't see all the little lines and we'll have less lines to look at. So now I'm just touching my finger on that plus sign to where I'm making the grid large, 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 the largest it'll go and you're seeing it change as I hold my finger down. I'm gonna bring it all the way back up to that 30 millimeters until it stops almost there okay see how big the grid is now all right so what I want to do for this to help me I'm still playing around with the color see I think you can see it on my with my camera a little better in the white so what I want to do now this is the left edge of the large grid and here is the line that we stitched the last one I'm just gonna scoot over to where I can line the grid line on the left up with that stitched line. And so I'll just lower my presser foot and then I'll start stitching. So as I guide, I'm not gonna look over here where my needle is, I'm gonna look over here where my grid line is. So maybe you have this feature and you haven't used it a whole lot, this will be a great time for you to experiment with it. If you wanna use that feature on your machine, 
give it a try. Keep in mind, this is where I'm looking if I'm using my grid. And then I just kind of stop. If, if I'm approaching a seam that's going this way, then when I get close to the seam, I'll just kind of slow down because my eyes are over here. And then I'll just kind of manipulate the seam. Now, if my seams are all going in this direction, that's going to be easy peasy and they're just going to flow in the right direction. Like all these last seams that I'm going to stitch. So I hope that was helpful for you if you have that feature on your machine. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the quilting. Okay, so we finished the center and quilted all the way to the right. I'm gonna pivot the quilt around. And now we'll go ahead and we'll quilt the opposite side of the quilt where we get to the outer edge. Okay, so we have it all quilted. I really like the way it looks. Let's look at the back. Don't you just love the way those quilting lines really tame the fabric? It just really gives it character. Okay, so I really like the way my quilting lines look. I like how far apart they are. Uh, maybe you um, quilted yours a little closer together. I feel like I've got enough coverage to where it's going to keep it all together. And it really didn't take me probably more than 30 minutes to do the whole quilting process. So again, this is going to be a really quick, easy project if you need to throw a gift together also. And if you decide you need to do it really, really fast, then guess what? Don't do the texture piecing and just do traditional piecing where you're putting your strips right sides together. So Think about that too. This also lends a great way to do piecing on your serger and quilting really quick too. Now let's go ahead and start squaring it up. Okay, so while I, when I square this little project up, one thing that is really going to direct me in this, a, a certain direction is the fact that I don't really want a I don't really want to cut off any of this strip any of that jelly roll strip so i'm going to take my long rotary my, i'm going to take my rotary cutter have a, a cutting mat and i'm going to take my long ruler and i'm going to just align it along the right side of that strip now, now one thing i i wish i would have done and i didn't do so i'm going to tell you is when i'm going off the edges when i'm doing my quilting go ahead and do a little a back tack right at the edge where you start and where you finish. That way when you rotary cut, it'll keep it from um, coming undone. I don't think it's gonna come undone real quick or anything because I'm gonna get an edge on this, but that would be an, a little extra something that I would do uh, to give you a little, little security there on each one of those th seams where you start and where you end. All right, I'm gonna slide it up a little bit. And I'm gonna start down here at the bottom. I'm just gonna align that rotary cutter. I'm going to align that ruler along that right edge and then just go ahead and rotary cut. All right, so I've got some of that cut. I'm just going to slide down as I go. 
Now I like to I like to line up the bottom of my ruler on a previous side that I've already cut and then I'll just visually line up along the edge as I continue. Okay, now we're gonna do this all the way up the side. Now typically what I like to do when I'm squaring a quilt, but this is different, okay? We're just really kind of being different here. I usually will typically guide from this first edge that I've already created a straight cut and then line my ruler up to go down this side. But we're doing our jelly rolls here, so I'm gonna kind of go off the grid. Y'all know I like to fly by the seat of my pants here and my intuition is telling me I'm gonna cut this one next because I don't wanna lose any of my jelly roll strip width there on the edges because that's gonna bother me more if this one isn't the same width as this one. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Make sure you don't have any fabric, any of your quilt folded up underneath while you're doing your rotary cutting. And I'm gonna go ahead and line up this edge Try to keep it as straight as possible. Might be a little bit off, but. So I'm noticing that this side is just a little wonkier than the first side, but you know, that's just the nature of fabric and pushing and pulling, but it's really not off too bad. Now, if anyone fusses at you about that, don't show them. Don't bring to their attention, don't bring your mis don't bring any imperfections to the attention of other people. You know we do that, right? The first thing we do is we show someone, ooh, look what I did. Okay, so I'm just kind of lining this up. I'm a little bit shorter up here. I'm just gonna tweak in, in a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of migrate just a hair. That's gonna be you and, I, you and I secret. When I do my edging, it's gonna hide, but I'm probably gonna come back and square this closer in, so we'll get rid of that that way. All right, so now, that I've got those two long edges pretty straight. I'm gonna grab that rotary cutter. I'm, I'm gonna grab my ruler. So because I'm off a little bit here, I'm gonna come in a little bit further up. And this is just a free form project that we're doing. So I don't have to have this a certain size. It's just a fun size, right? So now I'm gonna align I'm gonna align the edge that I know is straight with one of my straight lines. And then we'll go ahead and do that to the rest, to the upper edge. Now we'll just pivot it around and we'll do the opposite side, the opposite end. Okay, so at this point, if we notice, up here is a lot shorter than down here. So when I start squaring this in, I wanna make sure that I square it to where, when I get to the opposite edge over there, I still am right at the fabric edge. And I think I can kinda of go about 
right here, maybe back just a little bit. Again, I'm lining up the bottom straight edge of the ruler or on one of the lines on the straight side before I start cutting. If you've ever taken one of my classes and you've never used a rotary cutter before, um, that's the only thing that I'm really finicky about. So anytime you use your rotary cutter and you lay it down, you make sure you close it. Always close the rotary cutter. And another thing, sometimes I see people rock their rotary cutters. No, don't rock your rotary cutter because that kind of sets you up for a possible uh, accident, right? So always when you're rotary cutting, just cut away from you. It's better for you to go over again if you have to. Oh, look, I need to. Wow. Just, just to prove my point there. It, I wouldn't want to rock back. I always want to just give it firm pressure and go away. And this little rotary cutter allows me to push the button to where even when I push it down, that, that blade is locked in. Okay, just another side note. I like to help keep you safe. All right, this is pretty cool. What do y'all think? Even though when we finished, it looked a little bit wonky. Now that we've squared it all up, I think it looks so pretty. Now we have to bind it. And I think in staying with the whole concept of what I've taught you here to play with that texture piecing, why don't we finish all four edges of this quilt with a wide three thread seam? I think that'll just kind of bring it all together. Oh, what color of thread am I going to use? <laughs> you know, I think I'm going to do the mauves. I'm just going to do the mauve all the way around. Yep, I think that's what I'm going to do. All right, so I'm going to put my, I'm going to go ahead and set my serger back up for a three thread wide overlock stitch in that three, in that mauve color uh, composition. So I decided to go ahead and also incorporate that purple blendable thread. And I've placed that on the lower looper. If you remember, my backing fabric is, is got lots of purples in it, different tones and use of lavenders and purple. So I went ahead and decided to use this on the back and then on the lower looper. And then I have that mauve decorative thread on the upper looper. Now remember, these are heavier weighted threads, so we're going to get more coverage, more um, more thicker coverage by using those heavier weighted threads. Remember, this one's a 30 weight, this one's a 12 weight, this one's going to be a little thicker on the front, this will be a little bit not so dense on the lower looper, but it's still going to look really good. And then I went ahead and just put the mauve, just that mauve tone regular serger thread in my needle. I'm still set up for a wide three thread overlock. I'm going to test a little bit and see if I might want to shorten the length of my stitch. So let's go ahead and do that and see what it looks like. And because we have extra pieces, little scrappy things left over from our quilt, this is going to be a great place to do that testing. Okay, so I have my little scrap off of our quilt. So you, we have our purple backing and our little piece section on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and align the right edge of the fabric, that whole sandwich there, to the right edge of the plate. I'm going to even raise my presser foot just a little bit, kind of scooch it up underneath there. It's just kind of hugging that blade up in that direction. Because I have such thick fabric, I mean, because I have so many layers, I'm just going to help it in there and not allow our little texture piece to, to come back on me when I first get started because I have one right up there. I did put a 90 uh, EL needle, it's a needle that's recommended with your baby lock sergers. Alright, so let's try it out. looks I like the way that looks so it looks pretty on the front I 
I kind of tweaked my stitch length down just a little bit closer to one. Not right on the one, but just closer to it. And then I've got that 30 weight thread on the back. So it's a little thinner, so you're not gonna get as much coverage, but I think it looks really cool. I like the coverage that we're getting with both the front and the back threads that we've chosen. So let's go ahead and we're gonna put down all four sides of our quilt. Once again, I'm just gonna align the right edge with the fabric layers with the right edge of the plate. And just getting started, I'm gonna go ahead and just tweak that thickness up underneath there. Now every time when I come to a place to where I've got that texture meeting the end of the presser foot, I wanna make sure I keep that flat. with this process because we've got the texture we have the thickness so I just have myself set I have a variable speed control in my serger and I have it set to kind of the, a little less than the medium setting you also notice that I'm cutting fabric off that's just going to ensure that we have all that fabric for those stitches to sit upon that way you won't have any stitches hanging off the edge if you're cutting off fabric. corners on this on this little project I do have a tutorial I'll link it down in the description to where I would give you a really up close view of how I turn corners and you can go grab that too and watch that all right let me just at least show you how to turn one corner on this to turn corners, you will want to have your quilt flush edges, okay, which is how we have it cut. You don't have any extra batting hanging around. And so I'm going to serge to where I'm almost one stitch off of the fabric. Okay, I'm about one stitch before I come up off the fabric. I'm going to have my needle in the up position. I'm going to raise my presser foot. I'm just going to tweak my thread a little bit towards me and that's going to allow me to bring that fabric straight back and clear those stitch fingers and then I'm just going to bring the fabric around I'm just kind of pivoting it around and then I'm going to slide the fabric back towards the blade it's just kind of sitting by that blade but I want to make sure that when I come down that I'm at least one stitch onto my Edge, okay so we don't want to be we don't want to start sewing when we're off the fabric we want to be one stitch into that binding where we have that thread I'm gonna lower I'm gonna lower that presser foot and then you might can see it a little better see how we see some of that stitching from that first edge right there that means I'm at least one stitch onto the fabric corners take practice I have another tutorial that you can watch also that might be helpful when I'm doing a I believe I'm doing a rolled hem I'll link that down in the description Now, if you don't want to turn corners, then you can just surge all the way off. If you find that when you get to a seam, let me show you here. Every once in a while you can kind of raise your presser foot and just kind of pet your fabric towards the back if you find that you're getting a bubble here. So I'll just take a second there before I hit that seam and I'll pick it up and kind of 
that fabric, and that'll just that'll just help it even out. Go ahead and do a corner turn once again. Now we're going to be going down a side to where we really want to manipulate our textured piecing and make sure it stays forward. And when I said forward, I mean in the direction to where the thread that you want to show on the top. So this one's going to go forward. This one's just going to naturally come back because this is one of those seams that we have pressed in the opposite direction to where this is the pretty thread for that seam. This is the pretty set thread for this seam. Raising my presser foot, just kind of tweaking the thread for a little slack, straight back, and I'm going to pivot it around. Position to where I'm going to be one stitch onto that previous row. Because your threads need to have something to sit upon when you're doing this. Alright, so when we finish our last corner, I want to leave about a three inch tail because we're going to hide that tail. Now that we've got all four of our sides finished with our beautiful wide three thread finish, look how pretty that is with that decorative thread, we have one tail left that we need to hide. So I'm going to flip over to the back of our little project. I have that tail. I had mentioned leaving about three inches long, and we're gonna just go ahead and take a look a little up close. Here's where the tail is coming out, and I'm just kind of noticing that this, this looks like the stitch that I stitched off the edge, so I'm gonna hide it right behind there. Now I'm using a clover, um, it's a, a darning needle with a latch hook. It, it's really a neat little tool. I think the first time that I talked about this was on my sewing shorts with a serger tutorial. You can go watch that video if you haven't. And I that is the first time that I used it and I really like the way it worked. We're just going to slip the end of the little needle and it's a blunt end. It's not going to catch any of your thread. So we'll just slide it up underneath there. And there's the little latch hook opening. So we're gonna grab our tail. Have any of you ever created latch hook rugs? I did that when I was in high school, I believe. So now that just softly went in there and I'm gonna give it a little bit of, of a loop here. I don't want to have, I do not want the thread to be right here. That's gonna make it harder for me to pull this through. So I just kinda want it to be a little loopy. Mm, got about an inch and a half on the other end. And then we're just going to grab the bottom of it and give it a tug. Okay, so now that it's through, we'll want to just place our little fingers, our big fingers, whatever, and just kind of open it up to where we can figure out which side of that is the loose side. So if I get my finger in there, I can give it a tug. And you'll notice that the, the unattached tail just pulled on through. We've got that there. 
You can do some fray block if you would like to, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and snip the tail of that serger tail. Let's just go ahead and do that right now. And that'll just hide in there. And now we've got a pretty little finish to that last corner. I also want to give a special thank you to all of y'all who are watching my YouTube videos, all the kind comments. And I'm so excited that a lot of these tutorials are helping you learn things, get comfortable, get inspired. So just to let you know, I appreciate you so much and I enjoy spending time with y'all. Have a good day and until next time, create something and be so blessed. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Please click that like button and don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to have my Facebook group, my Instagram, and my YouTube channel noted here at the end. So definitely pop over there, like, join, subscribe, and hopefully I will see you next time on the next tutorial.